Ah. Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. Today's video, we're gonna talk about how to color grade like you expected when you clicked on it, you saw the title, the thumbnail, whatever that says. We're talking about how to color grade in Premiere Pro today. However, I'm not going to walk you through the same thing I did last time or the time before in the previous color grading videos because I've changed a little bit about my workflow and overall, I've just changed the way I do things. I'm no professional colorist. Uh, I am a uh, very self-taught hobbyist at best when it comes to color grading. Um, though some of you think my stuff looks professional and I appreciate that, I very much try to make it look good. But I wanna just clarify, I wanna point out, hey, you know what, I'm not a professional. That being said, let's hop in Premiere Pro. I can't speak, obviously. And let's get to work here. Okay, so we're here in Premiere Pro. If you watched the last video, you'll know how I set up this workspace. And if you don't know how I set this workspace up, you can click here and you can watch that video to not only help you speed up your workflow, but to have a nicer layout and a more functional workspace to work with. That said, let's cut it right into it. So I have three clips here. I think I'm gonna go with this last one just because I like it the most. It's a very even shot, if you would. Just me biking through a street downtown in Charleston where I used to live, where I'm soon to be living again. That being said, let's click and drag it into our timeline. Just the video, we don't need the audio for this example. And I'm gonna go over here to Elementary Color. Now, if you don't know how I found this, go to Window, Elementary Color. It'll pop in here somewhere and you can click and drag it around and replace it. So the first thing I'm gonna do and something that I do differently now is use a conversion what for Canon. So I shot in Canon Cinema Gamut in C-Log3 and now I'm going to be converting it from C-Log3 to Rec. 709 with a LUT and then I'm gonna color correct on top of that and then I'm gonna color grade from there. That way it's a three-step process. That conversion LUT takes care of the majority of the transferring and majority of the work for us. So it just makes the job a little bit easier. Now, of course, you have to find a conversion lot that is made for your camera. I'll go ahead and put a Gumroad link to that conversion lot, which is directly from Canon uh, for those of you who use Canon. And then I'll also put a Gumroad link to a S-Log3 for Sony conversion lot for those of you who use Sony S-Log3. Now, they're not mine. I'm not selling them. They'll be free but you can go ahead and download them there. Or you can go to the websites that are you know, owned by these companies, Sony or Canon or whoever else, and use a conversion up that you like. That said, let's go ahead and get into this. So first and foremost, you see how it says input what here under basic correction, click that, go to browse. Now here in the browse folder, I have a conversion what folder on my hard drive. Like I said, I've got loads of different ones for different purposes, but in my case, I'm gonna go ahead and use the Cinema Gamut's Canon Log 3 the BT709 or Rec709. I'm gonna go ahead and use this one, press open. Now you'll automatically see, if I turn this off, that was log. Now this is converted to Rec709. So it looks like a pretty decent shot already. We could totally leave this as it is and just like use it as an uncolor graded, very normal, neutral shot and that would be acceptable. But we're gonna take it up a notch. We're gonna make this a little better. At this point in the process, if you needed to adjust your white balance for whatever reason now, I think that this white balance is a tiny bit blue. So we're just gonna manually drag this back towards the orange side of the spectrum, if you would, and then a little bit towards the green. And I'm happy with that, I'm content with that, because again, if you uh, just turned off this, again, that's what we started with. We can reset these parameters to see what we originally had. Press Command Z to get back to it. My white balance that I shot in camera was set to be a proper white balance for the scene. Therefore, I know that my shot was pretty decently balanced already. It might not have been perfect, but it was pretty good. So that conversion lot really just took care of the color conversion and the white balance is good enough. I like the white balance, I think it looks right. So I'm gonna leave it as it is. However, if you need to, you can always use the eyedropper tool on something white for say this truck right here or these windowsills or that you know gutter. You can use it on something white that you know is white uh, to set the white balance that way. That being said, let's move on from there. We can go down to light. We're gonna bring the contrast up just because it doesn't have much contrast. So let's bring it up to like 50. We'll just put it at a solid number for now. Highlights, you know, we can bring up and down to test out what looks better. I kind of like a little bit of highlights being crushed in everything. I always kind of do that with my footage. So I'm gonna do that here. Again, these are all choices. The, uh, the conversion what takes care of the lighting conversion and the color conversion to an extent. Um, so really you don't have to worry about this too much. This is more preference here. Shadows, I'm gonna uh, bring the shadows down a bit. I want more contrast in the image. Whites I'll bring up just to make sure that it's a bright image because it was in the middle of the day, it fits the scene. And then blacks I'm gonna bring down a little bit too. Now we could be using, you know, if you go to window and elementary scopes, we could be using our scopes panel, getting a histogram, getting a vector scope, YUV, right? And, and all these things. However, I personally don't reference that too much. And again, I'm not a professional. I'm not doing this the professional way. I'm doing this the way that allows me to make as many videos as possible, make my videos look good, and 
help the people that watch them feel and enjoy the scene the way they're supposed to. So it's again, I'm keeping it simple for a reason. Yes, there are better ways to do this. I just want to clarify that. Now that we're back here again, we can see what we did, you know, by turning the effects off. That's where we started. This is where we are now. I'm quite happy with this color grade in regards to the actual lighting. And if we pan through this, right, you can see that it actually gets a little bit more blue. So maybe we should adjust the white balance a tiny bit more to the yellow orange region. So now even though that first shot's a bit more orange, as you come through here, you know, it's, it's pretty well balanced. Under our curves panel, we'll just add a nice S curve just for some simple added contrast. I like to bring my whites down, which is this right here, and my blacks up just because I like that little film look. If you would, you can see what we have by turning this off. This is before, this is now, before, and now. Again, this is just what I like to do. I might even bring the whites down here before and after. Perfect, there we go. That's all I'm doing in the curves panel. Now, the final thing I wanna do is go to creative, and I wanna bring the faded film up to about 10-ish, just to add a little bit more softness to the image. Obviously, I added a lot of contrast, and now I'm gonna remove a little bit of contrast in the faded film section, which kind of seems to fade everything just a tiny bit. Again, I'm doing this for a filmic choice. You don't have to do this. These are all opinions here. Uh, let's go ahead and close creative and call this shot good for the color correction and the lighting correction. Now let's go ahead and grade it. How do we do that? Well, in Premiere Pro, at least, you can go ahead and grade a lot of footage or grade one shot in the same way, and that's by using adjustment layers. So let's go ahead and down here, right click, go to new item, adjustment layer, right? Make sure it's the sequence settings. This is my sequence settings, so press okay. Click and drag it on top of your footage and stretch it to the length. Let's just drag it longer. So if we drag another clip in here and we color correct that one, it'll have the same color grade applied. Go ahead and click our adjustment layer, come back over here, now let's go ahead and change some things. I'm going to close basic correction because we already adjusted our lighting. We're going to go here to just adjust the color. So start in color wasn't match. That's where I start at least. If you have any footage that you want to reference, like let's say you found a movie and you have a clip from it that you really like, you can go ahead and press comparison view, drag that movie clip into the first frame of the video and then copy or apply that match and it will take the color from one footage or like one screenshot from that movie and apply it to your footage on the adjustment layer. I have videos on that. I'll link it here or you can watch the short which will be listed in the description. Um, but but we're not going to do that. We're just going to color grade from scratch with our own ideas. So right now I want to start the midtones. It's always the middle range. You know, we can go really harsh with it and see what changes. So obviously the midtones affect the middle range of light and color. And uh, I put it in the pinkish purple area right now. That's way too much. But you know, again, if I turn this adjustment layer off, we still have our based footage and that's the point of the adjustment layer. So we don't affect what we already have and we can change and add and remove things as we go. Uh, let's go ahead and undo this by double clicking in there. I'm gonna bring this up to the yellows because I think that this sunny scene deserves a bit more warmth. Let's bring the midtones down a tiny bit, just a little bit. And we can see what we do by turning this off. That's before, this is now, before and now. You know, it's not a crazy color grade. It's nothing, I'm gonna keep this realistic but it adds definitely some more life to it. And uh, on our highlights here, you know, these rooftops, the road a little bit right here, the actual sky, you know, all this will be affected. So let's bring it to green. You'll see how everything that's part of the highlights gets impacted heavily. We can drag this all around till we find somewhere we like. For instance, I like that orangish look, right? And I'm gonna bring this up a bit. And again, we can see what we did beforehand. And you might not like this look, that's okay. This is just to show you how to do it. You can always change things for your preferences. I really like that warm, overall yellowy feel to footage. So it's kind of something I do. Um, but again, you can test it by seeing this off. That's before, this is after. And I obviously lifted my highlights so that way it doesn't feel dark and yellow. It feels very bright and yellow. And I might even bring my mid toads down a bit more blue greens area. And then under shadows, now I want to bring my shadows kind of towards the opposite end of the spectrum. And I'm going to lift the shadows a little bit. I'm actually going to back off the highlights a tiny bit. Let's call that done. Let's call that for the sake of this tutorial. Let's call it done. Again, turn it off. That's what we had before. Then we applied our color wheels and match color grade. And this is what we have now, a very warm, yellowy type of summertime feeling scene, which is ironically when this was filmed. So it makes sense. I'm going to go to creative and finish off this look. Now, again, I like the film look. So I'm gonna take this faded film and I'm gonna bring it up to maybe 20, 30%. Let's bring it down to about here. I don't wanna get any noise and that you know color breaking like I'm starting to. So you, you wanna be careful and back things off and not overdo it. And now we have this final look to our footage and you know, that's that. Simple, done, 
We can go ahead and drag in a different shot, for instance. And you can see that if I turn this off, it'll affect that shot. Now the adjustment layer doesn't look good on this because this has not been color corrected. So quickly, let's go ahead and do that. Click your footage, go to basic correction, find and browse for that conversion what we had earlier. And now we have this color grade applied to this shot. Now, maybe this color grade doesn't feel right on this shot. Maybe it does. It's really up to your preference and up to what you're going for. Now, I would say that this color grade doesn't work for this shot, but it's a good example of showing how, you know, you color it once on one shot, and let's say it's a whole scene full of 15 or 20 shots that are all supposed to feel and look the same. You don't have to change that color grade 15 times. You do it once and you color adjust each shot. So that's the process. Some people like it, some people don't. Some people think it's tedious. Some people don't. Again, I just teach you guys things as I've learned them. Now, a few months back, I started using conversion loss instead of manually converting, and it changed the way I make videos because it's so much easier, and I don't know why I wasn't doing it sooner. So with that, thank you guys for watching. Subscribe down below if you enjoyed the video and you want to see more videos of this nature or other videos in the editing realm, if you would. I have loads of videos on the channel you should check out. Again, subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support. We're about to hit 20,000 subscribers, which is kind of crazy. I'll see you guys soon. This is not alcohol, just an FYI. All right.